Yeah, good times, great music at 2 and URFM 103.7. Our exercise physiologist, Mark Goswell, is here. Uh, being Wednesday, that's probably why he's turned up. Mark, thank you as always. I'm back, baby. He's back. Um, today, we, we, I know you wanted to always talk about, you know, we need to sort of be doing a little bit more than what we're doing. But today we're going to go forward a little bit and reach our limits. We need to know where our limits are. Why is that important? Oh, look, it's ridiculously important to know what your limits are and what your capabilities are. And every time we start an exercise program, we start an exercise regime, we do something physical or movement-based, everyone knows their own capabilities more than a third party. So if I'm training someone and I'm asking them to do a particular movement or a particular task, the individual themselves knows what they're capable of more than what I can actually get them to do. And unfortunately, what I see on a regular basis, at least a couple of times a week with new clients coming in, is that they've gone and started an exercise regime and they've gone and seen other professionals or other people associated in the industry and they push themselves well past their own limits and as a result, they injure themselves. Would it also be a fair assumption to say that wherever your limit is, that will change throughout different parts of your life? Because, I mean, if you've been uh, someone that's exercised regularly, say, for the last couple of years, um, your limit will be a little bit up here. But if you then stop for 12 months, that limit's not going to still be right up where it was. Yeah, 100%. It's like, I mean, we've spoken about it before. You literally, it only takes two weeks for your body to start to lose functional gains. It's depressing. It's isn't really it? depressing. So, <laughs> yeah, if you have 12 months off in activity and then say, yeah, cool, I'm going to go back and do some weight training or I'm going to mm. go back and do some aerobics, and you actually have that 12 months off and you go, oh, cool, I'll just go back to where I, where I was when I, when I finished, mm. you got no chances of being able to do that. Our body loses its function lose its capabilities so the whole thing is you've got to under you've got to listen to your body at that time at that day it's it can be as simple as well as like if you've got young kids and they don't sleep and you've had yeah three hours sleep and you still want to keep exercising doing that when you're completely mm. fatigued or if you've had a big night it's on a not, saturday night like it's yeah not cool. <laughs> no it's not cool so that's why yeah you, know, you can go in there with an expectation and an idea but you certainly don't push it beyond the limits of expectations but I mean if, unless you want to and then you just come and see me because it's you know, it's really good for my business and, and then you get to go out and have the big night with the money that with you the make. money that I'm making yeah um, <laughs> do you think as well we, it, it's very easy because you deal with people in terms of this you're dealing with people by the time they are, they've had an injury or something a sprain or whatever yep. is it easy to get sort of swept up in Maybe the limits of others around you, because I, I can. When you were saying that, I was reminded of a, a time spent at a gym, and I'd be on the machine. I look across, and the time I went must have been the same time this other bloke went, and it was it was able to jump up onto boxes. Very, and I thought that was magic that he could just do that, and he put the mat on, go a little bit higher and higher. But I know that I can't do that. But do you think that people? can get caught up with other people can do this so I'll push a little bit harder a little bit further a little bit longer yeah and especially when you're in that sort of group like group classes Mm. and group mentality so where yeah you might have 20 people in a class or in a group and everyone's doing yeah the same exercise because it's a one size fits Mm. all and there's that competitive nature in a lot of us Mm. where it's just like okay well that person yeah, might be carrying a little bit of extra weight and they you know maybe they don't look as good as me and I'm I'm going to just I'm going to push it and I'm going to do it But they might have been training and doing that exercise for the last 12 months. Just because someone's, Mm. yeah, you're looking over and seeing someone doing something doesn't necessarily mean that you can do it. And yeah, and that's, it doesn't take much to just, you know, create that sprain or that strain or that impingement that, you know, lasts for six months and then just stops your whole training history. Yeah. And again, uh, like you you can be that reign of positivity that's just all within the group and you're like, well, yeah, let's do more. You get caught up in the hype. You get caught up. So there is that, there is that emotional thing, but it's a, it can be an emotional driver that takes you away from being in shape, but then to get back, you kind of need that emotion to, to get yeah, back. Yeah, to drive you there yeah. and turn you up. And that's and one of the great things about group classes is it is that kind of that team mentality of being able to go and everyone pushes to the same goal and pushes to try to achieve the same outcome. But the thing is, it's you're, ne- you're never going to get, you know, in a group of 20, you're never going to get, you know, 20 people at 25 years of age and all around the same fitness levels. You know, you can have someone at 18, some people that are 50, but they're all in that same group class class but mm. so many different capabilities so that's why it's really important when you're doing that and it's it's so much fun to be part of that group yeah. classes but you've really got to understand when enough is enough and if you get into that point of fatigue that's where you're actually developing whatever function you're after like fatigue develops growth but you don't want to go past that fatigue point mm. to the point of breaking down well we're not all cars going coming off the assembly line you know the same shape the same model the same color paint on the outside yeah um we're different or as my it's, it's just becoming uh, m M&M psychology pretty quickly isn't it um, <laughs> we or, could start a new show <laughs> or as my dear close personal friend Clint Eastwood once said in 
a movie, a man's got to know his limitations. <laughs> I love that. And it, it is true. It's like you've got to, if you know your own limitations, push yourself to that limitation, but don't go beyond it. I mean, if you go beyond it, you start to break down and you can lose six months of your training and you know, start to blame the training as the, as the cause. But it's more that it was just you took yourself beyond your own capabilities. So just know where your limits are. Mm, all right. Somebody think about that with our exercise physiologist, Mark Oswald. Mate, as always, thank you for your time. We'll catch up with you next Wednesday morning. I will be here. All right. As a reminder, if you would like to uh, have Mark cover a particular topic, uh, you can do that by uh, shooting him an email. He'll have a look through those over the next couple of weeks. Uh, That address is askmark at 2nurfm.com.